start taking the time to really do the shadow work and figure your shit out is when you finally develop the strength and the character of a person who's going to be able to sustain the life that they want. Slut it out and you know, you, you're very men driven and that six months of hard work can put you five years ahead. Instant gratification and the partying and the clubbing and the girls and the boys. Like, I think the most uncomfortable thing that he would always tell me to do, like literally when I was in middle school. <laughs>
probably at a bar somewhere in Gainesville. <laughs> Same, um, probably in, intoxicated, but you said same, but you're, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Um, but just kind of like, let's recap. So Simi goes to college cause I'm sure there's a lot of high school similar we can unwrap, but Simi goes to college. This is where we kind of like join, um, some similarities. We both been at the same school. So like, like I said, Simi goes to college after your first, whatever week or so at school, like what was it like over there? So I am currently a sophomore going into my junior year, but I am graduating a year early and um, I am young. I agree with you. I feel like, and I'm sure you relate to this. A lot of people our age are not necessarily, I wouldn't say this is like a stereotype and a generalization, but not everyone understands the power of investing in yourself at a young age because a lot of us tend to live in the present, right? And it's normal. Mm -hmm. We're young. Mm -hmm. We want to live life. And for a very long time, that was me too. Like my freshman year, like you said, I was in Gainesville having the time of my life. And I think what really hit me in the heart was like when COVID happened and we all were in isolation and we all had to take that moment to kind of figure our shit out and be on our own and figure out what we wanted to do with our life. And I think when I came home from college, it was a time of self introspection. It was a time of reflection. It was a time of figuring out what am I doing with my life? Who am I surrounding myself with? And where do I want to go? And I think when you begin to be in that moment and you begin to feel very unsatisfied and unfilled with your life, I think that is when you really get the wake up call. And mm -hmm. so at 20 years old, like I know I have a long way to go, obviously, but I got really into like reading books and just constantly bettering myself, constantly figuring out what my limiting beliefs are. And it kind of inspired me to start my own platform where I help other people get in aligned with their goals and their actions and their beliefs. And so I have a long way to go, but I think just being in the grind of like focusing on myself has just made me extremely confident in what we can provide to the table, right? It's so. good training on your character. And it's very selfless of you to, uh, to help other people. Thank Two you. things. One, uh, one off topic, one back on to kind of shoot the right direction. This is me and message. Yeah, this is me and my girl on at Hoffman's Chocolates. Aww. Oh my God, <laughs> the roach. <laughs> yeah, it got pretty big. Got all, got How yeah, long ago is that? Uh, it says 131 weeks. Oh, yeah, wow. well, you, you had Seriously. one like six months ago. Yeah, that Before, one got pretty yeah. big. I can't find one of that one. No, you're good. Um, but um, two, I was going to say, you had just mentioned, um, you were talking about... Best version of yourself. What did you just say last? I, kind of <laughs> I was saying how, uh, actually, I said a lot. I feel like I said, I was just talking about how, like, in quarantine, it's a time of self-reflection and personal development, and then how that inspired me to start my own platform and help others along the way. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, when when you talk about becoming the best version of yourself, I think we talk about this a lot. Um, two things. One, have you ever, do you know about self-actualization and from Abraham Maslow? Yeah, do you yeah, like, yeah. believe in that? Do you think it's like, bleh? I mean, I haven't given much of him like a read, but I think it is. Wait, you said self-actualization? I think it's important to always like take the moment to really introspect and figure out what you want to do. And mm -hmm. to that extent, I do agree, but I have to like give him more of a read because I haven't really invested myself no, into it. No worries. And the other thing was, everyone has a balance i think everybody finds drives from somewhere even like we talked sure. about lifting the first day you step into the gym you might have a different drive to work out than the uh like the fifth year you step in the gym but how do you personally balance your drive and kind of relativity seeing where other people are and like let's say music you see people who've made it and you're like well they bleed the same blood i do they're a human i can do it too i use that as drive sometimes and that's relativity 100%. how do you balance that with I might not be there, but I have to be happy where I am now. That's a great question. And honestly, I think that's something we all struggle with because of like the comparison and constantly comparing your journey to someone else. And then that makes you unsatisfied with your life. And especially when you're young and when you're seeing other people living the life that you want to live, I think Kills me. you have like two options at that point. You can either a play this whole victim mentality and be like, Oh shit, I'm not where I need to be. They're having a better life than me. And then you just sit on your butt, not take action. And you use that envy to just not do anything. But, or you take that envy and that inspiration and channel it into yourself. And for me, I think I used to struggle with that a lot just because I've always kind of wanted to start my own thing, but it was always my limiting beliefs and my thinking that no one would care my age and people are just young and they were, they were just in a different stage of their life where I never really gave them much thought. What, what but, kicked it off? For so you? I'm going to tell you because okay, cool. I like, came to this realization the other day that this is actually what happened. So, you know, my best friend, I was telling you about Natalia, who's a shuffle dancer. Mm -hmm. So she would always inspire me. She's like, Simi, you're so good at speaking. You have this energy. You need to share with the world. 
out and it was just me in my head like hell no no one cares right and then she over quarantine just started becoming super active on tiktok like sharing shuffle dance videos and it was kind of in the same we were kind of in that same stage where we were like expanding ourselves we were stepping outside our comfort zone and when i saw her living so unapologetically herself it inspired me you know my best friend literally inspired me to take action and she doesn't even know that and she's probably gonna watch this and be like wow Simi, like, but like she doesn't even know that and like for the longest time I thought like if why am I like holding myself back so much instead of just doing what I know I have that inner calling to do right mm -hmm. and it goes back to the point like if you have any desire inside of you or any sort of feeling that you are meant to do something more and you're scared of it, like you have one life to live. Are you gonna live it, you know, not doing it? Or are you gonna just take the risk and see what comes out of it? I so, think we're, we're all in the same mindset. No, 100%. We all, we all are pretty much the same person. So we should just end the podcast for things. Right, no, thanks, thanks, guys. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to backtrack. To, <laughs> I wanted to backtrack to uh, Simi's uh, college life after Levi's digression, just because I wanted to hit on something. So when you say like, you feel like your younger days, this is like me thinking back. I wish I was f figuring this out at your age which I was, but not to the extent to which you're doing it now. Like you're doing a great job online, social media and whatnot. It's Thank just like, you. I feel like when we look back at our younger selves, like I'm sure you look back sometimes too. You're like, man, I would have wish I would have started the band when if I was I started a band 20. in high school yeah, instead exactly. of when I was 21. I feel like a lot of people think like that. Like if Dude, I just I, started I, two years earlier. I think like that all the time because the problem that I have, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people and it's not anyone's fault other than my own, but like nobody had this conversation with me when I was in high school. And I feel like if they did, I, I might've listened. You know what I mean? Like if they're like, Hey dude, listen, drop the BS, forget about the, forget about the partying, forget about the, the, the whatever college. Things that just yeah, don't, just add don't any matter. Value. The Fortnite, the, the wasting Instant of time with girls, like all that other stuff. Forget about all that. You're really good at this workout stuff. You have a little bit of a following. You should really try to pursue something. You know, you're going to work anyway, but instead of working to pay for your bar tabs or your fraternity dues, which no disrespect, I do appreciate being a part of the fraternity I was in. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I got a lot of good connections and whatnot out of that. But just putting myself in there, I think two semesters too much. Like one semester was good, but like just doing that throughout my sophomore year, um, being able if I could go back to what I was your age, taking a year like to get ahead. I would be a year and not even one year ahead. Now I feel like I'd be five years ahead because 100%. one year in this time, like in our lives at our age, I feel like is so exponential. exponential. There's like, this you know, quote that's, I read it. I follow all these like billionaire mindset accounts on Instagram and I love it. And there's a quote that you just reminded me of. And I'm sure you've heard it. It's that six months of hard work can put you five years ahead. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. so true because when you really take the time to better yourself and like going back to what you said about like instant gratification and the partying and the clubbing and the girls and the boys, like everything in balance is okay. But when your whole life revolves around this whole instant gratification sense and you're only living in the present, meaning like, like we were saying, it's important to embrace the present, but you can't only be in the present because at the end of the day, like you're all you've got in this life. No one's going to hand you a, sil a silver yeah, plate 100%. and be like, here, this is what you need to do. I think a balance is what we talk about. Everything when you when you talk about life comes down to literally a balance. Hundred percent. And whether it be uh, everyone has every culture has their own version of balance. Whether it be yin yang, whether it just be you know like flowing in the middle or whatever it may be. I think you have to reflect and enjoy the present, but also love love your past, learn from it, and you also have to plan for the future. Six months and five ahead. I saw this quote on. I love the quotes. This uh, <laughs> and it's just so funny. It wasn't actually. Let me take it back. It wasn't a quote. It was there's these like Reddit, um, Wall Street YouTube bets? channels. No, 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 not Wall Street bets. It, it's uh, they just read out Reddits and they're funny and you can just go down the YouTube wormhole and it's like an auto speak reader, um, reading it. But uh, someone was afraid to go to college at age 36. They're like, I don't want to be 40, graduate just getting my degree. And someone was like, Well. In four years, you're going to be 40 anyway. Would you rather be 40 with, with a degree, degree or yeah. without a degree? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> that's so true. That's true. That's true. No, it is true. But it's Yeah, just like no, not to be Nike, but like just do it. If, I, you, if see, you have something you want to do, just yeah, do it. Yeah, I've never, see, the thing is I never was, I never really cared about what people thought really necessarily. It's just I was in a bad environment and uh, were you in a sorority i was and okay. like for a year as well and then i dropped what, what sorority were you i in? was in dg okay cool what I, were you in i'm in beta slash was in beta i feel like fraternity and sorority is a little different very like, like once you drop you're done right you can't yeah really, you can't um 
thank God for all the guys in my fraternity. They actually help me out a lot with the business. They support us all the time. So no I disrespect there, but like just the lifestyle that a lot of the guys live and, and I'll talk to them about this. I'll even point it out to them and, and like kind of toy with them about it. They know that their lifestyles, a degenerate lifestyle. Um, but for them, <laughs> it's Boom. the truth. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> the brutal I, I, honesty. I just say, I just say how it is. And I, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, like, wow. um, so they know that that's what it is. But the, the thing is with them and there's nothing wrong with this, right? They want to go to school, get a degree and get a job. I don't, I, I have a job right now. And in my job, even the job I have now is not like a stagnant, like, okay, I'm going to get my accounting degree and then that's where it's going to be. Maybe I could be a senior accountant. Maybe I can like whatever uh, at Deloitte or, and make $200,000 a year. And that, that'll be my cap. It n- money is not the only thing, but for me, it's like the ability to always have the potential to get more. I don't want to be like in stuck. a corporate job and be stuck, you know? You need to have a ladder. That's how I feel. Yeah. Ladder, yeah. So the place I work out now, I have the ability to make as much money or have as much success as I want, which is great. And also with my business, I have as much potential as the world and my energy allows it to. So that's what I'm like. And for me to say that, you know, I could take the weekends to just whatever, F off, and maybe take a couple of days out of the week to hang out with my boys. It just does not fit in my schedule anymore. And it, it never should have fit in my schedule because your I, priorities are different now. Yeah. And, and that's the thing I was going to like kind of circle back is like, um, or come back to the beginning is like, no one necessarily told me and I didn't need someone to tell me, which is the, like you should always be within yourself. Mm-hmm. But I, this is why I try to put out content is because if I could even reach one kid at 15, 16, 17, that's like, Hey dude, this guy's, this guy's making some sense. He's, you know, 22, 23, he started his business. If I were to do this now, you know, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll be really big by his 100%. age. And I never had someone tell me that at my age, it was, and I'm sure you, you heard this too. You Levi, like, Oh dude, just have fun. Just enjoy life in the moment. Like, bro, you're going to you. go to college. The best thing about college is going to be the tailgates, the beer, dude, you're going to, you're going to smoke pot. You're going to like have so many chicks. And like, I know when everyone's college is like, dude, you should get a full-time job and try to graduate in three and a half years and save that money, put it into the stock market. And then if you're really passionate about something, go drive, go, go for what you're passionate about, build up drive motivation to achieve that goal. No one ever told me that. The only thing I was ever told is the college is going to be the best time of your life because you're going to have fun at tailgates and parties. Yeah. I almost feel like I missed out. I never went to a uh, college no, university. You, you did not. I, uh, I think I got accepted to FSU. I remember I got the pretty old thing. I mean, that was like, you either can go to FSU or you get a car. <laughs> or you get help paying with a car. And I was like, wow, that's, that's not what my friends get to do. But it's not every family's financial situation is different, you For know. For sure. And so I picked a car. And then it led to me going to community college, which I still didn't know what I wanted to do. And my dad was like, I'm not going to pay, you know, twenty to $50,000 a year for something you don't want to do. What's community college? That's a smart financial decision, yeah. though. And then I started EMT, fire, paramedic, and now I'm here. So I think... Every, everything matters in those decisions. So, Back to what you said, Matt, about how, like, you didn't have someone to guide you and stuff. Like, yet you still, you know, at the end of the day, you're here, you are yeah, 22 yeah. doing it. It, sh- it proves wonders. But, like, for me, it's, like, my dad, I think, was, like, the biggest role model for me. Like, he would always kind of guide me into, like, exploring more than just school. Like, trying new things, stepping outside your comfort zone. But, like, you have to be ready to do that. I feel like you... As much as someone tells you, like at the end of the day, it's all about you, right? And Just like, a fun question. What's the most uncomfortable thing that your dad maybe told you to try that you didn't know you'd like so much? Most uncomfortable thing? Yeah. Or maybe you're just most scared thing. It you're like a food you didn't want to try. I Okay. It was definitely not food. I think the most uncomfortable thing that he would always tell me to do, like literally when I was in middle school, like this is when he would be like, Simi, I see you like starting a YouTube channel. I see you doing all these things. Yeah. Like he kind of foreshadowed this entire like past six years for me. Like, in his heart, he knew, like, one day I was going to do this. Nice. And then it wasn't until, like, I just took the time for myself. I was like, oh, shit, I am going to do this. And life has been so much better. But, like, it goes back to, like, college, too. Like, if you can make one impact on one kid who's, like, in high school, I feel like that does so much to that kid. And, like, mm-hmm. for me, I'm 100%. really trying to cater my content to, like, high school kids and yeah. high school girls because, like, a lot of people don't have that inspirational role model and, like, if I was fortunate to be having that, like, I would love to be able to provide selfless value to someone who needs it, you know? I think that's where true fulfillment comes. It doesn't come from, like, the money. It doesn't come from the materialistic stuff. It comes when, like, you're able to really provide value to someone. Yeah. But. Were you about to say something? No, no, I wasn't. What are you going to say? No, I, uh, I have so many things I'd like to say. I just think it's, it's great. 
you could tell who people who are. I'm talking more than this mic. You could tell people who are driven because it takes a lot of bravery, and bravery comes in many forms, and, and a special type of bravery to to not be afraid to embarrass yourself. And I even think, for music, for you, like I don't know if you were scared at a point when you started. Oh my! Like, I have put out endless of embarrassing content. You think before so? I I like you know I was explaining the band and I showed you the music yeah. video. That reaction. I was like, wow, that's actually really good. That's a very new thing for me. We didn't always have professional sound, professional videos. We didn't have the professional skill mm -hmm. to record and stuff like that. We started with like our own like amateur recording and stuff like but that. That's how but it always starts. yeah, you start this. He started Water yeah. Buffalo, and the and what we always say is to just go, like not to say just do it again, but go make those mistakes, learn from them. And the more mistakes 100%. you make, as exactly. long as you're a coachable person, if you, you can never self-analyze and make the same mistakes over and over again. But when you go out there and just do, start you you grow faster. See, like unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, but fortunately slash unfortunately, these things are supposed to be given to us, not given to us, but like like coaches and teachers and and even parents in some ways. Not saying that I don't have great parents, I have amazing parents, but like these are the 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 people that are sup supposed to be the ones to help children and kids like and teenagers and whatnot. Uh, but nowadays, and like I said, it's either fortunately, unfortunately to you, people have to rely on social media to bring this type of knowledge to a kid, yeah. which is like, in my opinion, it's a little bit un uh, unfortunate. I wish that in high school and I went to one of the best high schools in South Florida, the best high Where'd school. Where'd you go? Suncoast. You've Community. never heard of that. <laughs> If you, I mean, it was. I don't know what it is no, now. I'm sure but, it is. And, and well, I say the best because uh, to me, it wasn't the best high school. Um, it wasn't. But no, no, because like I, I think back, I have maybe two or three teachers that were like really good teachers. The rest of them were like, you know. And and one of the big things is like, just like doing quality work and and exploring and and doing different things. That's not just like book, 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 book. Like we never had any. Everything was just like, okay, you do this, you write this, and then you turn it in. It was all, and yeah. Yeah, it's all the same. And like, I never was inspired once or motivated by any teacher, any coach. If I anything, relate to that If so anything, hard. they were the ones, and they were the ones perpetuating bad habits. Like a lot of them would come in late. A lot of them would skip out. And I'm, no disrespect to them. They try hard. And I know teachers don't get paid as much as they should for what they're supposed to do. Um, but I feel like their maybe their pay, their salary kind of reflects what kind of job they do. It's and also the they're restricted, like tying yeah. to just school and curriculum and how you just don't feel inspired. Like I have felt like that for so long and I never really knew why. And it wasn't until I really started doing things outside of that where I realized like there's so much more to life than school. And I get like if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, something that requires you to go to do your master's or any sort of graduate school, then by all means respectable. But like you, you went to community college because you didn't know what you wanted to do. And I think that is so important because if you're going to school just to go party, join a tailgate, join a frat and just waste your life, waste your money, waste your time, you are wasting your money and you're wasting your time and there's no point in doing that. So yeah, I plan on getting my master's minimum, but I didn't know in what. And I just wanted to basically use college as an investment so I know I'm financially safe later in the For road. Sure. And it's, it wasn't yeah. until I learned about um, the job career and that I wanted to go to now. And now I'm probably making more than I w faster than I would have with a master's. So I'm very happy that I went through that. And also, I think um, we were talking about high school. I think you just people don't have a maturity level at 15, 14, even 16, 17, 18 years old. When you have that one teacher who is always early, is always prepared for the class, mm -hmm. is always smiling no matter what's happened in his personal life. And I remember, I think Dr. Schoenfeld, what a great teacher. He's like, he loves finding kids' aptitudes. You could tell he's there with that motivation. But when you're 16 or 17, you're worried more about like, if, you know, the person in your class that you kind of... <laughs> think is cute notices your outfit like or status and popularity yeah. how you look yeah we've all been there and yeah priorities you can't are notice. off yeah you don't notice how 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 prepared your teacher is that day or or how how he set an example for everybody else you know and um i think because we are on our phones all the time social media is huge i th I, th I'm, I agree with matt it's not bad it doesn't change the world it doesn't make us glue to our phone it, so we're glued to our phone but we're looking back at the world through a different lens and I think um, there's good and bad, just like everything that powerful with the internet. I think uh, pushing off of this, I think everyone should have their jobs, careers, and vocations. So obviously, um, 
I don't know what that was behind me. It almost <laughs> killed me. Final it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, everyone gets a job when they first start. They need they need that income. You know, I can't need get that a, insurance policy, like that yeah. backbone. I can't get a job without job experience. Get, can't get job experience without a job. You know, that's to break yeah. the cycle. There's a lot of jobs out there that you don't need much job experience for. Mm-hmm. Everyone should work that. I was a kid at Lifeguard. Could be retail, the service industry, stuff like that. And then once you get your degree and things, you can go to a job. But a lot, or excuse me, you can get your career. But a lot of people stop there and they do their career to their 65 or wherever they're retired. Where people like, I think, um, you know, driven like us, we're looking for our vocations. And um, it's stuff I want to do. I love music. I I hope I could do it one day. You love um, fitness and health and inspiring people. And I, I hope you achieve your dreams and you have this selfless social media thing and mentoring and inspiring young like minded people like you. So I think. If you're watching this, if you got anything on this video, get your job. Cool. Get your career. It's going to take a lot of work. Don't burn out when you get your career. Save some money to invest, like like he said, and save some time to invest in yourself for your vocation. 100%. And just to add on that, like, I think we forget the power of consistency. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to do music. You're trying to blow your business up. Like, I'm trying to blow my brand up and eventually start my own business. And, like, what we forget is that instant gratification is what separates the top one percent from the people who are normal but it's the people who continue to persevere who continue to fail who continue to make mistakes but continue to be consistent that truly get and reap the benefits of what they started Mm -hmm. like you have to put that sweat equity in for music like it's gonna happen for you as long as you're doing what you're doing and you don't give up and you stop comparing your journey and all that stuff. Consistency and patience. Consistency and Do patience. Do you watch uh, Gary Gary Vaynerchuk? I love Gary. Yeah, he he speaks a lot of people who are like minded like him. I think when you're feeling down, you put him on for about like fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. He'll yell at Instant you enough high just vibe. to. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I think uh, I think it's hard to stay driven, and and even us three and, and people watching like us will get down. Dude, and, uh, just giving you guys a heads up. This podcast is, I'm going to stay up till like three in the morning tonight just getting a bunch of shit done. Like the last time we had that podcast, sorry to like get off topic. Oh, you see, it <laughs> motivates time, you itself. Yeah, you remember that last time we had that Nick, the Nick Franklin podcast? Dude, I was like, I was so like. That's the best feeling when you're in your flow state and excited. Yeah, I was like, I was like that for like three Play some badass music in the background. Um, but uh, sorry, I want to let you continue. No, no, it's <laughs> actually, it's funny. I, um, we, we talked in a podcast before how sometimes you feel kind of like a badass when you yeah, know, you know, you know the world's like resting peacefully and you're grinding. Yeah, I, mean, no, it's I gonna feel be that's so weekend. hard. No, I need I need one of those weekends. But at the same time, sometimes though, actually, no, I don't want to get into this. But like, there's no, some, sometimes yeah. I'll be up at three a.m. doing things. You're like, fuck this. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back. Yeah, fuck this. No, yeah. it's, um, we were talking. Me and Levi were talking before the podcast. Uh, I've had a little bit of a change in what I do for my job for the good. So like, I'm gonna get a little bit more on my plate, which is great. Uh, so. This podcast, just sitting here, I was watching you guys talk, and I'm just like, this is going to motivate me for after this and after what me and Simi do with our stuff after, because I don't know what we're filming after, but after that, I'm going to sit down for like six hours. I don't care what time I get. I have to get up at seven tomorrow, so I'm going to do it. And uh, just just like being surrounded by great energy just gets you in a mood. Dude, to it's so stuff. important. We underestimate the power of like who we surround ourselves with. Like I just made like a TikTok about this, how you're like the average of the five people you surround yourself with. 100%. And like down the road, your income is going to be the average of the five people you are closest to. We underestimate the power of influence. And like, I get what you mean. Like whenever I'm surrounded by just such good conversation and such good energy, like it just motivates you to keep going. You it's know? refreshing. It's 100%. refreshing. Yeah, hundred percent. I was gonna say it's almost. I hate relating things back to music, but I I listen to you guys and I I hear what you're saying in terms of my own metaphorical thoughts. But I, uh, it's like, you know, music. It's boring. You're practicing for this gig or whatever. Blah, but when you write that new song, it's like, woo, hot damn, this is a jam. Like it it, it feels good. <laughs> Yeah, no. And it it's, keeps you going for another couple of months. It's always day, like so. the result that you're producing that's like, damn, like I'm going to yeah. keep doing this. So I guess we could take this part of the conversation and say, if you're feeling down, and I think we all get those down moments, you're like, I work so hard and it feels like I've hit some asymptotal plateau, like I just can't break this horizon and just just keep doing it. Just do it, whatever it is. Well, I don't think any of us know because we haven't overcome that asymptote per se yet. Not saying that I we're mean, not all like just the asymptote of like depression no, no. Of, of right there, like a yeah, plateau yeah. in a bench or okay. or something as simple as that to a uh, a depressed month where you feel like overworked and underpaid. Rut. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, what do, what do you do? How do you get over those things? What do I do? I just do like if I uh, 
if I feel I need to, you know, motivate more, I'll, I'll either write or I'll put some more effort into getting with my band talking about, hey, what, like, what can, what's next? And a lot of times it's like twiddling fingers and we don't know what's next. And then we're like, oh, well, like marketing out here is a good thing. We should like market our music. Cause no, I don't know. That's for like other bands that have lots of money to market. And I'm like, now I do some research on marketing. Oh, people may pay more for marketing than they do producing the songs. So I'm like, but we pay almost thousands of dollars to produce the songs. So we have to pay more thousands to, produce, to market. Oh, God. <laughs> and then so then we start putting in almost like, all right, some, some big money into marketing. And now you're growing because you're basically showing people like, hey, do you like this? Yeah. And if you show 100 people, 98 people are going to say, no, you suck. And two people will be like, this is the best song I've ever heard. And then I've had people tell me that we're the number one most listened artist in their playlist. And, and awesome. we've had people say that like, we've That's changed great. our lives. And yeah. It's those words of encouragement that really make you inspired to keep going. Oh, yeah. Feel. It touched my heart a little bit. It was awesome. What about you, Sammy? When you feel like down, because you're young, younger. Um, younger <laughs> i'm definitely young i'm 20 i'm yeah, quite a baby honestly yeah, yeah. um so you're you're like you're pretty young in this game i would say 100 percent. Um, but like do you ever feel down or are you still like 100 oh, percent? Yeah. like i mean we all do i think we've all experienced moments where we're in a rut we feel uninspired we feel unmotivated but i think for me whatever whenever i'm in that zone i always go back to my why like, I think when you know your vision and you know your purpose, it is during those moments that you feel uninspired that you should always fall back to why you're doing what you're doing. And that's why I always say, like, you need to have your goals explicitly figured out, like written and like visualized. And so like when I'm in a rut, I personally, I love meditation. Like this is a practice I've been incorporating in my life for almost eight months now. And a lot of people, when they hear the word meditation, they're like, what, how do I do that? Like, does that even work? And that honestly has just put me in such a comforted state of living in my present and not worrying so much about the future that when I'm in a rut, when I feel uninspired, I always just meditate on my why. And that always brings me back into like my alignment and it gives me like the energy I need to continue. What do you do to meditate? I mean, we have our own versions. I think we, we love praying and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, that's also a form of meditation. Yeah, I also love listening Stair to music. Stairmaster has been my meditation. Stairmaster? I'm not even kidding. I think when I jam out to music and I literally just like... My Vi mind only goes one thing. I think that's fun too. It has to be for meditation. Yeah. Not not just not what, like music. Yeah, but like listening and like you know how there's, there's times that you're you're listening to music. Oh, this great song. Man, uh, you sing a few lyrics and that's whatever. And then there's times where you know that if you have that tired drive home where you you don't just hear a song, you like feel a song. Mm -hmm. That like special form of like true active listening to me is like I can't really focus on anything else because I'm so focused on the music or like, even a podcast. Yeah, yeah. But audio in general, I could lose myself in a lot of entertaining things and we all have our way of coping i feel like it's yeah. so different for everyone i just know like you have to figure out what brings you back into alignment and that could be journaling that could be meditation that could be going on a walk for 30 minutes and clearing your head what do you do to meditate like what do i use yeah what do you use so i normally just do guided breathing and i do something called pranayama which it's a form of yoga as well but um i'm really into guided meditation so there's a few youtubers that i use i'm really into van hoff right now he's like i'm sure i don't know if you guys have heard of him very very popular um who taught you about meditation is it nick dubdeck and his girlfriend no no guess okay. guess who <laughs> you won't guess yeah, so honestly <laughs> guys i have to like give props to my dad like my dad awesome. put me in my first meditation class when i was 15 so i went That's to this right. thing called art of living and it's kind of like a retreat like a spiritual which i was talking about in games so how i wanted yeah, to yeah, i kind of yeah. want to create an event like that okay. but my dad took me to this class when i was 15 years old and he's like simmy it was my brother my mom me and my dad He's like, Simi, just do it. Give it a chance. I was the youngest kid there. Everyone was like in their 30s and 20s. And when they saw me, they're like, oh my God, like you're so young and you're doing this. Like, do you realize what impact that's going to have on you? Like five, oh, I six thought, years I thought from they'd now? be gatekeeping. You don't even pay taxes. What do you meditate for? <laughs> yeah. I know. And back then I didn't even understand. I was like, this is so stupid. Like I'm just sitting here yeah. in my brain breathing. Now, when I started really like surrounding myself with people, like even Lorena and Nick, like they love meditating. Yeah, they're big. I think it's the power of who you surround yourself with and what inspires you. And that is when you really get into these practices. So. Nick, like, 100%. like Nick, Nick? No, 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 no. Oh. Just a funny, quick little digression. I remember I slept at Nick Updike's house one time when I went up to Gainesville. Um, I don't remember why I went up like last year. I woke up and I went downstairs and I uh, no, I was sleeping on his couch and then I was down going through their downstairs. Have you been to their house before? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, I, mean, I like been to like their neighborhood where I met Lorena, but they, they have like a neighborhood or they have a neighborhood. They have a, like a, a meditation room in their house. 
That's cool. Um, and I like walked by and I saw his girlfriend sitting there, which is, I didn't know her that much at the time. I just knew her by her name, Lorena. And she was just sitting there with her eyes closed, like <laughs> sitting up. And I thought she was like hung over from the night before. I love she was that. like sitting up, like kind of leaning. And I was like, just watching. I was like, kind of like, what the What's fuck? wrong and with I, you? <laughs> and I walked over to make breakfast and she didn't move. And then I kind of got like nervous for a second. I was like, what did you go? I'm picturing your reaction. No, just no, going they through had, that. They had, they had like, they had like an open door and she was sitting like kind of leaning, but like this. And like, I couldn't tell if her eyes were completely closed or what the hell was going on. So I, I remember I texted Nick and he never answered me. So like I went upstairs, I knocked on his door. He was still sleeping. And I went back downstairs and then I looked around cause like they have like little spiritual like things and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, like and I kind of figured what it was and then she opened her eyes and then she's just like, hi. And I was like, what's up? And then she's like, oh, nothing. I was just meditating cause I meditate for however many minutes in the morning. And I was like, oh, interesting. I never told her what I thought she was doing or what was going on. I was just kind of. Funny story. It's a really weird sight to see when you're not like yeah. fully exposed to it. And that was how I felt in the beginning. Oh, I didn't think it was weird after I knew what it was. But exactly. I just, yeah. No, yeah, I it was, get you. It was kind of funny. But anyways, my current med meditation is uh, when I do cardio at night, which I don't do cardio at night. Normally, sometimes I do in the morning. It just depends. How many times do you work out in a day? I uh, just want 12. Oh, I feel like I always <laughs> see you working out. No, a lot of those videos I post are like from days before. Oh, uh, so. okay. Um, but and I have literally have my garage is my gym now. So. If I'm ever bored or whatever, I just go in there and mess around. But I've been uh, walking on the Stairmaster. You know the lights I have in there, the, ne the neon lights? I had turned the lights off at night. I turn them on red, and I just walk on the Stairmaster and put an audio book on or put on, like, uh, like rain sounds or something. I just, like, just go with it. That's weird. I heard uh, some color associations. Red was, was more energetic and angry, and blue was more calming. I, uh, I don't know why I chose red. I just chose red. Yeah. For the Shoot. lights on your, on your thing, on your Stairmaster? No, there's he like, has it, LED strips. yeah, I can show you, but like in the, in the garage, there's like LED strips around the whole garage. Oh. So at night it gets super dark in there and I just turn the lights off That's and cool. I turn the, I don't know, it's just my form of meditation. No, I, I think that is like, it, I think colors have like a huge role in 100%. like how you feel. There's like something called color psychology. It's like yeah, an yeah, actual yeah. thing. Really? What does hot pink mean? Cause I love it. I love hot pink. <laughs> no, I, I actually read, uh. A little bit of color psychology just to like get a basic idea because i want to learn more about video editing and color grading and stuff i'm like there has to be some sort of like there is there's a bunch of associations with colors and then you know depending on how you do your work you can even go against those associations to make it it's weird <laughs> art, art for me art for me is very like I, I think i'm creative but i'm not artistic if that makes sense like i have the creative mind but i'm not like super able to like aesthetic you mean like what do you mean by artistic like, you know how people can just, they could just draw like, oh, I can't do that. awesome things and they yeah, could just no. like put together these crazy like graphics and stuff. Like I'm very creative and like I can think about these things, but when the execution comes down, I'm not the best, if that makes sense. You got to like do what you are good at and 100%. the rest you just outsource and you find people who are better at it. Yeah, you can't definitely. be a jack of all very, trades very for true. sure. I try, I try to be as best as I can at everything so I can understand how things yeah. work. But uh, at the end of the day, you're right. You have to, uh, you have to know your strengths. I think it. I think it, you have to, you can pick. I I feel like sometimes it plays the. Uh, sorry, I wasn't speaking. The uh, if if you want to do it right, do it yourself. But there's also people that do it way better than you. Hundred percent. It's like you got you got pick your poison. Yeah. yeah do I, I spend the time or money? Yeah. Time is money. Time is money. Yeah. <laughs> that was what our first podcast well. was about. But go ahead. I feel like. Oh, sorry. No, I kind of cut you off. No, you did not. Um, you said like, I remember you saying like a while ago, you have OCD. Like for me, I'm OCD when it comes to perfectionism. And that is something I am trying to work on because like when I first started like making videos and content creation, I was overthinking everything. When did I say I have OCD? I'm just curious. Wait, you mean true you OCD or like, like, the, the like what people use oh, OCD? Yeah. I get No, like, like OCD, like not actually diagnosed, like just like, like very, like you want everything to a T, you know, oh, like that's how so, I am. Sometimes, certain things sometimes I get yeah. true OCD really? with when I'm really tired. Like we, obsessions and compulsion. Yeah. <laughs> when Nick Franklin about the, uh, we talked about this with Nick. When you, what does he do? No, I'm just, he's like, it's a, I don't remember we have in the conversation, but it's just I, I remember every single podcast I've ever had. Yeah. There's a certain satisfaction when you have an obsession in your head and you have a compulsion that comes to satisfy it. It's like when people, um, they're afraid of being broken into their house. So they lock their door, but yeah, they do it three times for satisfaction. And then, you know, three weeks later, they have to do it nine times. Yeah, three runs yeah. three. Is that you? No, no, no. Oh, um, I was like, okay, that's actually uh, OCD. But I get, yeah, that's true OCD, but I get, I get a taste of it. What was I doing the other day? Washing my hands. I have this, I have this slight OCD. Like if I blow my nose, I'm like, yeah, it was all in the tissue. I'm like, I still have to wash my hands. And if I'm tired, if I like, 
feel a sneeze coming, I can go, Chew. and there's nothing comes out. It's pure air. In my head, I'm like, there's still microscopic, <laughs> like, so sneeze funny. that could have traveled around the tissue on my hands. I'll, I just go, and I wash my hands real quick, foam soap, just to be clean and stuff like that. I get very clean, like, clean OCD, but nothing too crazy. I don't wash my hands like 17 times a night i'll get up maybe like once or twice but <laughs> we're maybe talking three about times it. that's what we we're talking it's about so get, getting up to go to the bathroom around that oh yeah peeing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like do i pee now because then i won't have to get up at 5 a.m <laughs> or do i just go to sleep now <laughs> the way that you guys think the way that men think is just something yeah. <laughs> it's hey, listen i was gonna turn the tables on on you in, in a sense to ask you this question because you posted about it the other day and i thought it was interesting because for the people that watch, I'm very like, I'm very, and you said like you said, I'm very blunt about things. I don't really take excuses. I don't really care for people's like extra nonsense fluff on social Good, media. Good, yeah. Because at the end of the day, like I think that's how people in society should be run. And I'm not going to change my outlook on life because I have to surround myself with people who don't think like me. That might sound Hershey. ignorant, but it Hell no. to me it's not really that ignorant. No, it's and not. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I don't mean it in like a mean way. Like, oh, if you don't align with me, like fuck you or whatever like i just i have a certain way i live my life and if you don't align with the way i live my life i'm gonna let you do your thing and do you but if you come into my circle or you come into a conversation with me i'm just gonna tell you how i feel mm -hmm. regardless of how it makes you feel and um so you put a, a picture or a video or something and i commented on it, it was about hot girl summer because you know it's summertime now mm -hmm. so you have yeah. your own opinions on the hot girl summer what would you say your opinions on it? And then I want to hear Levi. I'm ignorant to all this, so I have to learn. Okay, okay. Ignorant? Oh, because you don't know. I don't yeah, really know. So I don't really know what it means either. I have an idea of what it means, but I don't know the actual definition. So if you know the actual definition, I actually don't. But yeah. obviously, I'm 20 years old. I go to college. I hear, I see women posting the caption "Hot Girl Summer," yeah. and so I went on Urban Dictionary and I googled it, and it said that "quote unquote" hot, hot girl summer is when like you kind of just like you, you can say it kind of just slut it out and you know you you're very men driven and like you just don't give a shit like that kind of vibe right and like that's okay like everyone has different priority like partying all that kind of stuff right kind of summarizing it and i'm not disrespecting the girls who do that but in my philosophy and the way i like to guide my life and the way i like to present myself and that's why i need i put the caption as hot girl summer i basically meant that Hot girl summer was when we know our worth, we are not emotionally reactive, and we pursue our goals. And that, in my definition, is the definition of hot girl summer. So, like, I just personally don't understand why there's this whole thing, why being hot and, like, being a girl and why this is, like, directed towards summer. Like, why is this, like, the stereotype of how women should be acting? It's just social you media know? trend. I think, I think it stems off of in the summer, you have least amount of clothes, and it relates sexually and stuff like that. But I don't think... Um, I think the, the negative part of it is having to be single in order to be hot girl summer. For sure. Because I know me and my girl are cutting right now. And when it gets to true summertime, we're, I think we're on the brink of it right now. Um, I think we're going to be hot couple summer because we're going <laughs> to be. That's the way it should be. Yeah. And, um, but I think I've never had any bad connotations of it. What, uh, when Matt gets back, I want to hear his opinions on it. But do you think it's. Or well, while I'm speaking, I'll just voice my opinion. I think there's probably good and bad about it. What do you think about it? Is it more good? Is it more bad? Is it finding the balance? I think it depends on the person's intentions. Like, obviously, everyone is at a different point in their life. Everyone is guaranteed to make the decisions they want. But from the people who I have surrounded myself with and how I've perceived the way that this connotation of hot girl summer has been portrayed, I don't see it in much of a positive light because I feel like it's very degrading to a woman. But at the same token, it's like you are allowed to do whatever the hell you want with your life. But, like, for me, my definition of a hot girl living in her life in summer is those qualities it's focusing on yourself if you are single it's grinding it's not relying on someone else for validation or it's not being codependent on your partner you know mm. it's things like that where i think really truly make a woman confident and like secure and hot in a way that's not only physically oriented you know yeah and that's what i think the problem with you know social media is i feel like a lot of people perceive you know, physical appearance to be like the number one thing, but we don't value, you know, inner beauty and inner strength and how you, you know, internally live your values, your morals. I think that in itself is a little more important in my journey and in my life. And that's kind of why I made that caption. Cause I think we as women should talk more about that rather than just solely the way you look, because like that doesn't do anything. Like 
The way you look can easily change, but your character is what truly lasts a lifetime. And so that is kind of what I like to talk about on my channel, like just embracing your character and striving to become a better person through valuing who you are as a woman internally as well. Not just how you look, not just having the perfect body and like the perfect status, the perfect boyfriend, like all of that is just instant gratification, you know? So that's how I perceived it, honestly. I think Matt agrees. (laughs) I think it's person dependent. I think... I, I think we all believe in work hard, play hard. And if you work hard enough, I think that's why we work hard. And so either if we're building a business for, I don't know, let's say passive income, you're, you're working hard on the front end so you can play hard in the back end mm-hmm. at the end of your life. Same with the regular American dream, work hard so you can play hard after you retire and you're financially free. You know, for a hot girl summer, there could be a bunch of, uh, what's a, a career that has some, a teacher, a teacher has summers off. Let's say, of the female teachers, this percent are single and they get to literally deload from the school stress. Obviously they have to plan a suit before school and then they have right. a bunch of after, but they probably have a little time to hot girl summer it up, you know, really deload from the, from the career that mm-hmm. they have, you know? And, um, I think, uh, I, uh, I never understood if it, if you have to be single for hot girl summer. Cause I think I saw a TikTok was like, uh, um, me just getting a boyfriend so I can't enjoy hot girl summer or something like that. Yeah, but I think it is. I think it is when you're single. Like that's that's what it's directed towards. Yeah, I think I think uh, there's good and bad. Yeah, I, I probably I don't know because you definitely have some fun a uh, couple a uh, hot couple summer. Like, like I just I imagine like brunches with all my other for like me you me and my like, girl Matt his girl. <laughs> like trademark the world the word hot couple summer. Hot like couple why summer. is that not a thing? Where, like, couples just, like, grind it out and, like... I've, I've seen some of that, too, though. I've seen, like, matching um, sheen uh, swimsuits. Like, the girl will have, like, this purple... This, and then the guy will have, like, purple with, like, even darker purple palm trees everywhere. Like, walk in the club, like, what up? This couple's hot, <laughs> you know? Interesting. So, what so, do you think? I know, I heard everything. Uh, I was just saying some. Okay, what's your... Yeah. My, uh, you uh, my opinion on it. Hot Girl Summer or just... It's not, it's, it's an excuse for said individuals, whether that, and I don't want to just hate on women because I don't have a mother, I have a sister, I have a girlfriend. I don't hate women and the content that I make. Some people might think that it's offensive towards women, but I'm equally as tough, if not tougher on men. Um, so the hot girl summer, I think it's a very destructive term because of what's associated with hot girl summer. Like what we know. Levi thinks of it as like an innocent term, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not. It's it's. I think it comes from a Megan The Stallion song, right? It does like it. I B have no clue. Like but it, it's basically just like saying that this summer I'm gonna do whatever I want. And and like I said, if you disagree with what I say, I don't really care. You can do whatever you want. At the end of the day, I'm not going to come after you because you're having a hot. I'm not gonna comment on your picture saying like, yeah, screw no. you because you you know you're a piece of. Um, but I just think it's a bad thing because a lot of women who participate in, or who will participate in this hot girl summer men too i mean at the end of the day like i said i'm equally as tough um they're no gonna regret they're gonna Boys regret somewhere. this at, <laughs> they're gonna regret this at uh, at some point in their life um because it could have some long-term impacts on the characters that they like the character that they want to have later in, in their life and hopefully everyone comes to a realization that the instant gratification of partying and doing all this nonsense is not really worth their time per se. I love that you said like it could have long-term repercussions because I think we forget how the decisions we make in terms of who we surround ourselves with and the cop, like the partners we choose to have, like you are who you attract. Okay. And like, I'm not saying that being a hot girl in summer is means that you're a bad person means that you don't have any self-worth, but chances are if you are relying on getting a guy and like not really valuing your worth like you are not valuing yourself and you naturally are putting that energy out where you're not going to val- you're not going to get a guy who values you either you know 100%. And I think people forget that like you have to hold yourself to a standard if you expect something of standard it comes down to morals what yeah and no, I was just going to say like it's it's surprising to hear this coming from a female because I feel like nowadays not just, and like I said, I'm not just trying to hate on a woman. I'm making disclaimers because I don't want to come off as like this misogynistic asshole. Um, but it's it seems that nowadays culture and our society is pushing this on females to an extent to where it's way worse than what it ha- for, for dudes. Because I think that guys have already been perceived as like these nasty pig, sexy, yeah. sexual dudes. Like that's how men have always been perceived. 
And I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that if you're a dude and you can, let's just say, taking this sleeping with individuals, sleeping with 100 girls is an accomplishment. I think you're wasting your time. I think that's whether you sleep with one girl or a thousand girls in your lifetime, I don't think that shows you being a successful man or not. I don't think it, it embraces it, any masculinity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and I think that this is now being pushed onto females because of the culture that society has made us want per se i don't want this and and any any people that are in my close circle don't want this either um but like i said men and women i think we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard and the term hot girl summer doesn't mean anything obviously on us it just means a hot girl summer but the lifestyle that's associated with this term i feel like can be very destructive towards somebody's not only somebody's life life being number one their goals their whatever they want to do but also their future relationships their future relationship with themselves, like their um, their self esteem, how they view men, how they view other women, and also just their perception on life itself. Because if you get stuck in like these party phases or these things where you're like going nuts and you're going crazy, and you know this guy or this girl, or whatever, like you know, tonight and tomorrow's gonna be someone else. So what's the next move? You know, once you get into this lifestyle, the longer that you stay in it, the harder it is to get out. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that because so many people don't realize that. And the fact that you're like 22 as a man and like, you're so self-aware of that is just so commendable because I feel like people our age don't realize that. And we're just stuck in this society. And I think media and social media has a huge role in that, obviously, like how we portray women to be with the hot girl summer thing. But like when you finally realize that like your worth can't be justified based on how many people you have, how many partners you have, your social status, going out and partying, like all that is fun. But there comes a point where you need to ask yourself, is this adding any value into my life? Is this making me a better person? Is this setting me up to be the person I want to be? And like you have to be honest honest with yourself because at the end of the day like you making these decisions like these decisions to surround yourself with this kind of lifestyle is only making you worse long term and like you, you said that like 100%. people don't realize that the decisions you're making have a hundred percent of a role in the values that you are going to have as a person and it's not until you realize that you need to start being independent and start taking the time to really do the shadow work and figure your shit out is when you finally develop the strength and the character of a person who's going to be able to sustain the life that they want. Exactly. Levi, what do you think? I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of things. I feel like you have this. I feel like you disagree a little bit. I want to hear No, no, no I, I don't, can I see it. I don't I disagree. I, too. <laughs> I don't disagree at all. Because we, we've disagreed on, on these comments. No, this is really? actually my tired face. It's I want to hear your perspective face. for sure. Yeah, no, I think tired. I actually agree with you for the most part. Um, I disagree with the statement that nowadays uh, they're getting pushed more towards like one way or the other or, or girls are trying to overcompensate, becoming more like sluttier and chasing the man and shooting your shot kind of thing. Where And the guys are the ones that kind of await for the predator, so to speak. No, no, no. I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's trying to let, like there's a playing field that like society needs to level. We need to have an equal playing field. Oh, yeah. But I just think that like, because, you know, like traditionally men are known to be pigs, right? No, that's what I, yeah, that's what I was saying. I think it's always been the same for, for like years. And and obviously like with social media, men 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 are the way that, that they are. There's their spectrum. There's the ones that are overly <laughs> overstepping. They're a little bit too alpha or too sexual that they, they how do I say? They're just, you have your spectrum of, of guys that... Um, you know, in their actions, you have a spectrum of women. Some of them are like, you know, I'm okay with staying at home and being a mom. And you have their, okay, actually, I want to independent be my own. And then you have yours, like, we have to overcompensate. The, the We have to do what men do. We have to be better than men. You, I think in the past, there's always been the spectrum mm-hmm. of your your pigs, your, your you know, what's it called? I like a say. little more feminine? No, I, I guess I guess I, w- I was going to this big generic thing. I was going to funnel down, but basically, I think <laughs> things are, are how they have always been in the past. And when it comes specifically to hot boy or hot girl summer and stuff like that, I think it's just an excuse to to have fun and embrace your depression. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, it's like uh, it, I think the bottom line comes down to your morals and stuff like that. Because some people aren't like us, and and I'm always I will never. I want to speak correctly. I, I'm steadfast and pretty broad shoulder with my morals. Yeah. I won't throw them to the side 100%. just for anybody. I won't. Nobody, you can put a gun to my head and, and I'll never deny God and things like that. But I also understand that there's other people. You can't make them make choices. Sometimes mm-hmm. I have my choice. Like 
views on maybe abortion or doctor assisted suicide and things like that. Yeah. But just because I think that you shouldn't take a pill in your own life doesn't mean someone who doesn't, who's an atheist and doesn't believe what I believe doesn't mean they shouldn't have the choice to be able to take a pill in their own life. And exactly. like for that. sure. For so sure. finally down to like the morals and if some girls and, and or guys and their choices and their fulfillment comes off of instant gratification for the rest of their life. And all they want to do is every summer enjoy hot girl summer, then that's kudos to them. I won't enjoy it as much because my satisfaction comes with more fulfilling things like building a family and wealth and touring the world, for playing sure. shows. And like, I have a lot of, of stuff to do and sometimes I might not have time for hot girl summer, but me and my girlfriend can go out on a Sunday morning, get mimosas and have a little hot couple summer ourselves. But at the same time, <laughs> I still maybe think I don't, um, I don't maybe to me, that's just relaxing. Cause I work so hard. Yeah. Whereas to, I don't fully understand the whole hot girl summer thing. So I think maybe it's just like, maybe they're, they're just looking to, to, to prioritize for two and a half months playing instead of working. That's what in my head it is. They're just switching priorities for two gotcha. and a half months. Gotcha. I'm glad you're saying that. Cause I think like you said, everyone is entitled to make the decisions we want, but I know that the people who are tuning into your podcast and who really resonate with your values and what you put to the table understand that like this perspective is coming from the best intentions and like, these are people who want to level up their life and they realize that there's more to life than the instant gratification. And as much as we live by these values and morals, I agree with you. Like mm -hmm. there are going to be people, there are going to be people out there who want to live that life. And by all means, kudos to them. I totally agree. But it's, I think the point is to be self-aware of the decisions and actions that you are taking and the potential long-term repercussions it could have on your physical and emotional and, and well-being from a practical standpoint. Yeah, I, I, I think that if think that, so as well. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. I was just going to say the only thing I combat you on, Levi, is that like when you say that it's been like that for a while, it has. Obviously, there's been people in society that have been driven. There's people in society that have been degenerates. But the problem with society now is we have the big guy called social media that I promotes, just think the internet in general. Okay, yeah, the internet is, laziness, yeah. promotes the these lifestyles because they seem more fun. So back in the day, like it was a lot harder to realize. Let's just take Hot Girl Summer for example, because it's just on the table. It's but our topic yeah, of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's just because uh, it was a lot. It's a lot harder to know what Hot Girl Summer is or to see what girls are doing or guys or whatever. So it's like it's harder for people to go down that route. But with social media, the, as good as it is, there's always the bad part of social it's media. It's being advertised more. Yeah, so it's like fun. Yeah. It's you know you see it all the time when you're exposed to something. You see it all the time and you're hearing it, and that's what's popular. That's what's trending then you're going to want to side with that versus like, let's say 30, 40 years ago when that wasn't around, you can argue that TV was like that, which maybe it was. Um, but let's go even further back to like the fifties and sixties when there really wasn't that. Flyers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, um, no, I, I can get on board with that. I, I see what you're saying. It's, it's more advertising shared. And a lot of people think that like internet's dangerous and there should be some type of censorship before you're 18 and stuff like that. And in the end, all you could do is is uh, implant good morals in, in the, the people uh, around your life. Yeah, but I, I think, um, I, forgot, I forgot something I was going to say. We were talking about something with, uh, oh, we can move on and I'll think of it later. I think it had to do with, uh, with it wasn't related to Hot Girl Summer. <laughs> I forget. With it. But the tiredness good. is hitting you. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. No, yeah, at the end of the day, like I just think everybody should be entitled to what they want to do. And we're just trying, like you said, Simi, we're just trying to hear, we're here just trying to help people and trying to inspire and motivate. So if people don't resonate with what we say, then that's all. That's your problem. Yeah. It's a big if then statement. That's what I was going to say. It's like, uh, for when people watching this at the end, like, what are we conversing about this particular subject for? What did Matt bring it up for? It's if then, if your priorities are, you know, booze and babes, hot girl summer is the time of the life for you. If your priority is, is building the best version of yourself and um, your morals and your, your goals stand with, with something that kind of aligns closer to ours, then Hot Girl Summer would be more destructive than productive. I think 100%. That's, that's, a, that's a good bottom line. No, I think you nailed so if it. So you're, if you're trying to build something, then uh, Hot Grind Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, before we close out the podcast, Simi, did you want to hit on anything else? Honestly, I think we touched on a lot of things. Yeah, we, we made this podcast quite chaotic with yeah. a lot of good content. It's fun, though. It's fun. Yeah, though. no, it's always fun. That's the best part. I apologize for my tiredness. I actually had a lot of fun doing this. So. No, it was it was a blast. It was it's a always blast. a blast. Uh, CJ. <laughs> I just called you CJ. It's always a blast, Levi. Um, but without 
you know, closing out just yet. Just real quick, Simi, for anyone else watching, we'll clip it up. Obviously, put this on your socials too. But let's hear a message for all the viewers out there, people younger, people older. What do you got to say and what's to come for Simi in 2021, 2022? Um, if there's one message that I can relate to the world right now, it's that consistently focus on what your end goal is going to be, but also, like we said, embrace the present, embrace where you are right now. As much as we say, like, you need to do this, this, and this in order to be this, this, and this, you're young, okay? Like, there, you, there's going to be a point where you understand and you realize that, like, you have years to do what you want to do, but also don't forget to have fun, live in the present, and don't forget your values and your morals, and also be surrounded by people who constantly allow you to be better. And, like, I know if you're watching this and you know me, like, you know I say this all the time on my YouTube channel because I really do believe in that. As much as we talk about leveling up, leveling up our life, we also understand the importance of having fun, right? It's finding that balance. Find finding that balance. the balance. And, like, you're young. You only have have this time to live and it's also understanding that you have to make sacrifices but you also have to have fun right so that is what i would say um but if you definitely want to check out some of my content um my instagram is simi anand and i do have a youtube channel so you can always check out more of what i say there the, the link should be in the description yeah 100 yeah cool. but um anything else levi hopefully we'll have levi on for more podcasts coming up this summer we're going to try to make some more time um but anything else with the viewers, no that's levi? it i think um it was something that you haven't experienced, but with us, when we keep talking about these podcasts, they, they all circle around. They like, they're interconnected with each other. And we had, I think we had a podcast about time and money. We covered that here. We reached a little bit of the hierarchy of needs. And, um, I think a, a big one we talked about is finding that balance. And whether you go through the wormhole of recommended videos on the water Buffalo training method, or you stop it right here, um, Three words, find that balance. That's the key to a lot of the answers in life. And sometimes uh, it's and, like, and do I enjoy right now? Do I YOLO? Do I, do I have fun and relax or should I grind? You know, find the balance. If it's Monday through Friday, maybe your time to grind. If it's Saturday, Netflix with your significant other and, and drink coffee, iced coffee at 9 a.m. and relax a little bit, you know? Find Here, the balance. Here's that my, was very specific. <laughs> here's my, uh, my kind of like connection. Um, enjoy what you do. Because if you enjoy your what you do and like what you, like let's just say that's work, let's just say that's school, let's just say that's creating content. If you enjoy it, it does not take the same toll as if you didn't enjoy it. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, how do I do something that makes me money and I also enjoy? Well, that's for you to figure out. But there's always something out there. Like there's literally a million things that people can do nowadays, and we're so exposed to everything because of social media, because of the internet. There's no excuse for not having at least an idea of what you can do that will generate you income while you also learning and growing with it itself. So, yeah, it's never been easier, honestly. Uh -huh. But it's a lot more competition, but it's never been easier. Yeah. And like you can't just let the, but you also can't let that competition get to you because like at the end of the day, like if you have some sort of inner calling that you are meant to do more, or you want to do something like you either can either A, just fall to the whole victim mentality and compare yourself and fall through that whole competition or B, you take action and you grow yourself as you go with it. But if you really enjoy it, that is what makes this experience 100%. so fulfilling. Yeah. And anyways, though, do um, you want to say the last words? No, I think it was a pleasure words. interviewing you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Simi for having for, me. Thank you, Simi. And uh, for Simi and on, that's Levi Ruiz, the co-host. This is Old School Matt. We're back with another Buff Talk. See you guys. Hey guys, thank you guys for checking out this video. Make sure to go check out all of our other podcasts, Buffalo Barbecues, our Buffalo Workouts, and also a slew of other things, including challenges and whatnot. So make sure to check out all of these different things. Thank you guys for watching. I am Old School Matt here, and this is Water Buffalo TM. Peace.